Jane. Welcome to the Attract Capital webinar series. I'm here today with CEO and founder, David Barnett. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jane. Hi. So today we're talking about the root causes of underperformance after acquisition financing. So what is the usual lender performance expectation after an acquisition deal closes, Dave? That's a good question, Jane. Um, the lender expectations are generally that there will be growth, mm -hmm. uh, usually not significant growth, but usually like high single digit growth. They also expect that whatever the, the buyer of the business said that they were going to do with the business post closing in terms of expense cuts or rationalizing expenses, that those adjustments are immediately captured. Um, and they also expect that if you gave them a budget that said, we're going to do this level of revenue and this level of profit, that you come close to that. Like they're expecting you to track budget rather closely. Mm -hmm. Works. Right. It's good to hit the budget. <laughs> yes. So what is your experience with what happens right after a deal closes? So it's sort of my experience is that there's always a little bit of a disconnect between what the buyer projects on paper and what really happens in reality. And because the results are less of a function of what the buyer is projecting than it is what was going on at the company immediately prior to the ownership change, mm -hmm. which is to say that, is the company having a good year? Um, are there, is their backlog up? Are their sales up? If so, they're gonna do pretty well post-closing. Long-term, the buyer's strategy will change the, uh, the, the projection of the business and should result in better performance. But like immediately after, you know, even though a buyer might think that he's gonna have an immediate impact on the company, it doesn't happen. It's really whatever was going on before is usually what you get. So if it was good before, it'll be good. If it was bad before, it's gonna be bad. Um, sometimes, sometimes, in fact, what happens is, is the buyer creates their own problem in that they project really high numbers post-closing mm -hmm. and the business is only gonna deliver what it, the level it had been on. So you're almost setting an unrealistic expectation so you're creating this, this uh, illusion of underperformance when in fact the business is just performing in line with what it was doing. It just can't jump up that fast, that, that, that far that fast. Interesting. Yeah, it gets a little, it gets a little three dimensional. Yeah, you know? that says a lot to it. <laughs> so aside from market demand changes, what are the root causes of underperformance that you're seeing today? I would say a lot of it is that the, biz the buyer falls in love with the concept of the business, like the competitive positioning of the company, the industry that it's in. They, they fall in love with that, they go native, and they're too focused on that, and they're not focused enough on the actual practical revenue and profit drivers of the business. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's they, they overestimate how quickly the growth will materialize. Mm -hmm. um, they overestimate how quickly the, they're going to capture the expense cuts, and they think everything's gonna happen way too fast. What we usually find is that somebody says they're gonna cut a million dollars in three months, they'll get a million dollars, but it's gonna take like 15 months. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen right away. I also think that a lot of the uh, roots of the underperformance come from the management of uncertainty. Um, if you have uh, companies with unhealthy cultures, mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, talking around the water cooler and rumor mongering, and if that's happening, if that's pervasive in your culture before the closing, you don't stand much, much of a chance in terms of hitting your numbers post-closing. And also there's a, a lot of obscurity with an ownership change as to what the financial incentives are gonna be for the management, so that adds to it. It's all those factors kind of combined together. Yeah. So tell us, what do you think a buyer can do about these root causes? So in order not to be a case study in underperformance mm -hmm. post-closing, there's a few things you wanna do. You wanna have a deeper understanding of the performance drivers of the business. You wanna have an operator's mentality, an operator's perspective. You don't wanna be a theoretician or a strategist mm -hmm. when thinking about the performance. You want to be an operator. And if you think very granularly about the profit drivers, you'll be much better off. You also want to look at how the prior growth spurts of the company were formed, like what led to the historical growth of, of 20% versus 5%. You want to get your arms around that so that you really understand it and that will help you. And you don't want to get carried away with the, uh, the, the sophistication, the sexiness of the growth plan. You want to keep it real 
And I think if you do all those things, you're in a much better position. And finally, you don't want to overestimate the budget. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Be conservative in how you're projecting. And if you do all those things, you'll get beyond the underperformance and you will not be a case study in underperformance. Thank you so much. This has been so helpful. Well, there you have it. We hope you learned a little something today. We're always here if you have any further questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.